For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger, Because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products. And we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Many years ago, the story goes, there was a cabin in Pocahontas County, West Virginia, that was said to be haunted. This cabin along Sinking Creek was called Hell's Cabin for the man who owned it, Philip Hellingham, or Old Hell as he was known. Today we tell the story of a haunted cabin that turned out to be more than that. Hello folks, I'm Steve Gilly, along with Rod Mullins, and this is another one of the stories of Appalachia. Okay, Steve, let me see if I've got this right. Philip Hellingham, or Old mm -hmm. Hell as he was known. Never heard about this before, but this, of course... Another one of those great stories out of wild and wonderful West Virginia, but still old hell. You got to tell me about this. Oh, well, we're going to do that. But first of all, we got to start out by saying that this is one of those stories that kind of lies on the border between history and urban legend. Ah, and I found this story in the Philadelphia times newspaper dated November 5th, 1887. But Rod, that's the only source I found other than in a book by author, Laura Wright, who, apparently found the same source and wrote about this man in his cabin in a couple of her books about Appalachian oddities. So take what we're about to tell you with a grain of salt. It may or may not have happened. It may just be a story, but I think it's a neat little story regardless. And okay. we're going to tell you about it. All right. Well, an unnamed officer of the law was sent into Pocahontas County, West Virginia in the 1870s with one job, to find a very prolific moonshiner one who was selling more of the illegal stuff than anybody in the region. As this lawman began his search there, he heard tell of a haunted house, which was the home of a strange man located at Sinking Creek, so he decided to investigate. If you didn't know, Sinking Creek lies at the foot of Droop Mountain, site of a very famous Civil War battle, and runs through a narrow valley. At that time, only one house sat along this creek, owned by Philip Hellingham known locally as Old Hell. Old Hell was about 65 years old, Steve. He was tall with gray hair and cold gray eyes. And he was very strong, much stronger than a man of his years should have been. Now, not trying to knock anybody that's 65 years old and does weightlifting or anything like that, but this guy was said to have been very strong beyond his years, okay? As it goes on, local folks told the lawman to be aware of Old Hell because he had made a pact with the devil himself. That sounds like another familiar story we've kind of heard at one time or another. But his house, it was said, was home to ghostly visions, horrible shrieks and moans, and smelled of, get this, sulfur from the very pits of hell itself. Well, on his way to investigate old hell in his cabin, he came upon the home of a farmer. He stopped to speak to the man who was what he called an exhorter, from his church. Now, this farmer told the officer that four years earlier, he'd stopped at Hellingham's cabin and asked to spend the night since it was very late and there was no way he was going to make it home. And that was just the beginning of a very interesting night for this farmer. For you see, that night he was awoken from his sleep by the sound of shrill whispering in his room. Well, the farmer lit a candle, took a look around, but saw nothing put out the candle and crawled back into bed. At that point, the whispers got louder and louder, turning into shrieks and horrible screams, ending in deep, hollow groans, and finally one long, drawn-out gurgle as if someone were being strangled to death. The farmer said he sat up, lit the candle, and with his hair standing on end, which I can fully understand, spent the next several minutes listening to the whispers, shrieks, groans, and gurgles three more times, and that was enough for him. The farmer got up, dressed, got on his horse, and rode off to, well, any place besides Hell's Cabin and whatever Satan had going on there. As he rode away, he said he turned to see the cabin lit by a phosphorescent light show with the smell of sulfur in the air. That's the last time this old farmer visited Mr. Hellingham. <laughs> 
Well, Steve, you know, I'll tell you this much. I think the farmer was far more patient than I would have been at that time because he set up, he listened to this stuff. I mean, this is like something, this is in a cabin, okay? This is not like in some hotel room or something like that and all these noises going on in the next room and you're trying to lay there and go to sleep. But still, all this stuff happened. And he got up and got dressed. I wouldn't have got dressed. I'd have went out there with my birthday suit. It wouldn't have made any difference because this kind of stuff scares the crap out of me. But anyway, others reported to the lawman that they had seen strange beasts like cows, but with tremendous horns gleaming with fire near the cabin. Well, the officer took these reports in stride and continued to Old Hell's cabin to see for himself what was going on. Well, he knocked on the door and was told to enter. There, the officer found Old Hell lying on a temporary bed on the floor. His face was pale and thin, and his eyes showed a feverish fire. Old Hell asked for a drink of water, which the lawman got for him. The water seemed to revive him a bit, since it was, as Hellingham told him, the first water he had had in two days. You see, old Hell had been sick with fever for over a week, and nobody had stopped by to check on him, you know, being terrified of that old haunted house and all. The officer made old Hell some food, but he couldn't eat it, asking only for a little broth. Old Hell told his visitor that he was dying and he had a confession to make. It turns out that Philip Hellingham had come to West Virginia from Tennessee. Right after the Civil War, he'd made himself into one of the most notorious moonshiners in that state, so we figured he ought to relocate. He'd found this land on Sinking Creek and had liked it, so he bought it and built his cabin there, which is where he now ran his still. And it was how he ran his moonshine operation that astounded the lawman. You see, this cabin had been built right up against the side of the mountain in that narrow valley. Old Hell asked his guest to pull on a ring attached to a rope near the end of a log in the back wall. When he did... The lawman saw the log pull away from the wall, revealing a large cave in the side of the mountain. In that cave, Rod, were several stills, mash tubs, grain, and other things you'd find in a still house. Along one side of the cave was a swiftly running stream which ran into the ground. In that stream were two iron pipes running underneath the cabin. According to Old Hell, After I built my house, a storm came off. An hour before it arrived, while I was in that cave, I heard a low, moaning sound, preceded by shrill noises, which sounded like someone whispering. After a few minutes, this was followed by louder, deeper sounds, winding up with a loud gurgle. I figured I'd hide my stills by scaring folks off, so I put those iron pipes in to guide those sounds under the bedroom, so anyone nearby... They'd hear him. He also said that the lights were something that, well, was kind of in the water that reacted with his pipes. Now, those lights would be carried by those pipes, then radiate out of them and up above the house, causing it to glow if conditions were right. Well, he told the lawman that the contraption worked so well, nobody had been near his cabin in over a year. I can see why. And that surely he would have perished alone had his guest not come by when he did. Now, after this, he lay on his back, exhausted. He told the officer to look at a box in the corner after he passed away. There, the officer would find some papers that would tell him more about Old Hell's history. He asked him to write to the people mentioned in those papers to tell them that he had died. An hour later, Old Hell was no more. The lawman did as he was requested opening the box and finding that Old Hell, Philip Hellingham, was a native of North Carolina from an excellent family, well-bred and educated. He'd come to be in Hell's cabin because in his youth, he'd gotten angry in a poker game and had killed a friend after a quarrel about the cards. He'd left home and had never returned. A year later, lightning struck the cabin and burned it to the ground. It's said, though, that to this day, folks in the area avoid the sight of Hell's cabin at all costs, which I certainly understand. Oh, me too. I understand it perfectly, but I tell you, what a great story, though. I mean, and like you said, you got to take it with a grain of salt. Could be an urban, you know, it's kind of been molded into 
being an urban legend so far. But, you know, there's so many different traces of different things in this, like supposedly selling his soul to the devil or whatever it was and so forth. You know, people didn't understand, but you got to give him credit if that's what he really did. And that was to, uh, <clears throat> how can I say this, camouflage, I mean, sorry, camouflage his still operation and everything by building a cabin around it and then having sound effects the way that everything would be and also some neat visual effects also to kind of scare people off. And it being 1887 at the same time. That's I mean, exactly that's right. A big thing to do back then. Yeah, I, I don't believe this is a true story. I don't think this is history. I think this is more folklore. But it is a story that indicates, mm -hmm. with the elements of this story, a lot of things that show up in Appalachian folklore, different right. stories at different times from different people. So it, it's, I think, something really neat to share with folks, and, and I'm glad we did that. Yeah, I am too, because I, I think it was neat the whole time. And I still say that I would go, if I heard those sounds and that gurgle, I'd be running out of there in my birthday suit. I wouldn't waste time to get clothes on and try to get out of there and just casually just go on down the road and say, I'm never coming back again. So, And folks, that's the story of Hell's Cabin, another one of the stories of Appalachia. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe to the Stories Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And until the next time we meet, y'all take care. So long, everybody.